Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on Holy Week with Dan Shields. The year was 1973, and after a landslide victory, the closest advisors to the commander-in-chief felt confident in their position of ultimate power, the will of the people having voted the administration and their beloved president in for four more years. And they had plans for the country— security and prosperity and change. And to a man, they were not just faithful to Richard Nixon. They were almost fanatically committed. Charles Colson, one of the president's closest advisors, said, We had sacrificed very lucrative law practices. We had invested our whole lives in the work, 24 hours a day if necessary. He later claimed that he and his fellow advisors would have laid down their very lives for their president. And in return... They had gained enormous power and prestige and privilege. This small group was arguably a collection of the most powerful men on earth. But something was wrong, terribly wrong. There were ominous forebodings that a storm was rising, one that could mean disaster for all of them. An investigation had begun into the charges of obstruction of justice in a case involving campaign spying, the theft of documents, and a subsequent cover-up. The Watergate scandal had erupted and would soon engulf them all. So what does this have to do with Holy Week and the death and resurrection of Jesus? Well, modern critics of the claims of Christianity have had a number of different angles they take to discredit the faith. But one of the most common and central critiques is to question the resurrection of Christ. Because they know if they can knock down this central pillar of the faith, the whole house comes tumbling down. One of their main arguments was that the apostles fabricated the story of the resurrection for personal gain, for power, prestige, and privilege. But the first question that comes to mind, and we all should have, of course, is what power, prestige, and privilege were they aiming for? They knew that they would be ostracized, hunted, persecuted, and possibly killed. And all but one of them were. And he, the apostle John, was imprisoned in isolation till his death, all the while holding to the story that he had witnessed the resurrected Christ. He knew that recanting and denying those audacious claims would mean freedom and comfort, seeing his beloved Israel again, seeing his loved ones again. But all of the apostles of Christ went to their deaths holding to this claim. And they weren't the only ones. Many of the early disciples saw their possessions taken, their families killed, and had to run for their very lives until they too were hunted down and killed, in the most gruesome of ways. The disciples of Richard Nixon, when pressure mounted, dropped one by one, admitting to their lies. They too faced loss, the loss of power, the loss of reputation, and for some, the loss of freedom. But their lives were not in jeopardy. Their families weren't in danger, and even their financial situation, though less stable, was not totally at risk. I mean, at worst, these men would face ridicule and possibly a short time in a white-collar prison. But they would write their memoirs into books and do interviews on TV and justify or rationalize their actions, and life would go on, and they would probably come out wealthier than they had before. Yet all of them, to a man, jumped ship. Those men who said that they were devoted to death turned tail and ran, every man for himself. And the disciples of Jesus did the same thing at first. Their leader was dead, and so were their hopes for the future. And they all ran for their lives, every man for himself. But a few short days later, everything changed. The disciples facing the loss of everything dear to them would not deny that Jesus was raised from the dead, regardless of the cost to them. So we have to ask the question, why? And there, I believe, is only one logical reason for this. It was that the benefit far outweighed the cost. It was that they actually saw the risen Christ, that they knew that he truly was God himself, and they knew that one day, very soon, if faithful, they would spend their eternity with him. There was no earthly thing that they stood to gain, only loss. But if what they witnessed was true, they had only gained from obeying, even if it meant the loss of everything. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.
Thank you.